Greetings YouTube, Fuzz here, welcome back to Final Fantasy XII and in today's episode we're going to be taking on our next Esper so come and join me, if you enjoy watching don't forget to hit the like button and let's get on with today's Zodiac Age episode Before we actually go into the next area and face off against the boss that we're going to be facing today I would like to recommend some preparation and you can actually make this fight which can otherwise be quite difficult relatively trivial. First of all you're going to probably want to use characters that have three mischarges each so that you can get a nice quickening chain off at the start since this boss does have adds and if you can wipe those out quickly with a quickening chain then the first obstacle is dealt with quickly. Uh, next up you want to be able to equip ice reduction gear on your main active party members. I'm going to be starting off with Van, Balthia and Ash, and Ash is going to be our healer. So what I've done is thrown a Ice Shield onto Van, that's going to reduce uh, Ice damage by 50%. And then for Balthia and Ash, I've given them each a Tourmaline Ring. That is something you can uh, learn on the license board by selecting Accessories 5. And you do get two Tourmaline Rings at the start of this dungeon anyway, as well as an Ice Shield. So you should have everything you need, the game's basically hinting that you need to equip this stuff. And the reason for that is this boss has a nasty, nasty AoE Blizzard Jar attack. So it is important to get rid of that particular damage. Well you won't be getting rid of it but you'll be halving it, which is obviously very useful. Uh, at that point then we're going to head over to where the sword was previously blocking the way. And who just leveled then? I missed that. Uh, I don't actually know who it was. It was either Van or Balthier since Ash was already level 31. So the sword has now been lifted. Which means that once we've taken care of this purple cretin again. I keep seeming to be killing this thing many times. Then we can go ahead and uh, enter through the newly accessible door that's just down the south of this area. So we're levelling up quite nicely as well now I think. And hopefully if you've been spending a bit of time in the trials and what have you, you should be getting some nice amount of license points as well to be boosting up your stats and abilities. Varn's got slow, but I'm kind of hoping it's not going to be a big deal in all honesty. So this is an Esper known as Mateus, and interestingly, it's one of the Espers that you may have encountered already if you've been doing the Trials levels 10 to 20. We're going to start off immediately by trying to get a Quickening Chain going. So we're going to be doing the usual, we're going to try and target roughly in the centre I guess, which appears to be the boss itself and wipe out as many of these ice azers in the process as is possible. So let's get a nice chain going. Didn't really want to use a two missed charge, but uh, I guess it's what was given to us. So Varn and Balthier each have one charge left, and Pinello has three. You have to try and remember as you do a good chain. Try and maximise everything. Please. I said Pinello, I meant Ash. This is my first time doing a quickening chain with Ash, actually. Not that it makes a difference, but. So Balthier has now expired his charges. We'll have to try and refresh those before the end of the chain. I never miss. That's it. He's got two left again after this. I 
I never miss. Always try and use the mischarge if you see it. I know it can be hard because you get me to spam a button quickly because of the time, but it is important to try and use those. I think we're all out of mischarges now, so we're going to have to refresh until we get them back. If we have enough time. I must oh no, Ash still had one left. Come on, mischarges. There we go, Ash. And again. Time for any more, do you think? Oh, it's Ash again. So we're getting a nice chain going here. Hopefully this is going to do a whopping amount of damage. We're on about 13 now, is it? That's good. Ah, oh, just missed it. We got to 14. Almost got to 15, but this should be good enough to get us off to a cracking start in this fight. And we'll finish off with a good old wind burst. Concordance. Yeah, did a nice amount of damage with all of that. So I'm just going to briefly switch to Van. See if there's anything in the way of thieving in this fight, which there might be actually. There's a rare, a rare drop of a rare steel rather of Grim or Togale, so we probably won't get it. You can just get a potion. Oh, we got a Pisces gem. Interesting. And this is quite a nasty attack, but hopefully with your defences against the ice element, it should do a heck of a lot less damage. Grab all the good stuff. And this Esper is down. Right, good stuff. Go through our traditional victory dance, of course. Right, and now we're going to just head to the license board, since we have the new Esper to add to our repertoire. And I highly recommend that your knight, if you have a knight, uses this Esper, because it helps them to unlock various other abilities. So, it's over here. Oh, hang on, I'm on Bushi at the minute. I don't want that. We want to go onto the, the night board. And we are over here. Oh, no, I'm not going to be able to do it now. But the basic reason you want to get your knight to do it is because you get white magic 6 and white magic 7 unlocked. So, basically, your knight becomes... Uh, a healer as well, so a traditional paladin I guess, and since I'm playing Final Fantasy 4 at the moment, that's quite apt in my opinion. So I do recommend giving Mateus to the knight job, but I can't do that yet because I need license points, which won't take long. 
And then on either side of the room here, we've got a chance of a chest spawning. So we'll go and see if the other one spawned. It has. Oh, excuse me. I tried to pause the mic in time, but I couldn't. Stupid allergies to hay fever, that is. Right, so we're going to continue on south here. I'm going to hope for some cutscenes so I can have my sneezing fest off uh, microphone here. You should try it on the Dawn Shard. See if it can destroy Nethicide or not. What? He just may be onto something. The Dawn Shard's no use to us, after all. <laughs> the stone bleeds mist. It has been roused. It fears the sword. The stone is quiet. This is the sword, the Nethysite Destroyer. Should it find its mark? Vaughn! Tell me, did you see him again? I didn't. Not a thing. Not even my brother. Not... not anything. And we actually get the official story item now, the Sword of the Kings, which is a weapon. And you've probably already got it if you've been uh, stealing from Belial at all in the trial mode. But, there we have it, we've now completed this dungeon. And can basically make our way uh, back out. So in order to get out of this place, we're going to head north here. And don't forget you can get that rare mob spawn in this area, so just be aware of that. I have done a video on it if you want to see how to find him though. Thirty license points on Vaughn. I could give him the golden amulet thing that gives you double license points, but I'll get them no time at all in trial mode, so I'm not too concerned. Take care of the dark mare. Hopefully, one last time. Going to head up here to use the waystone. 
this will take us back to the Ward of Measure, where we can go ahead and exit the dungeon itself. And of course we just need to head north to do that. Just going to flee, so we don't get slowed down by these annoying enemies here. And we're going to be getting a, another cutscene in a moment. We're going to head towards the save crystal, but I don't think we can use it just yet. Okay, so it looks like something's going down at Mount Bermesis. So we're going to go ahead and teleport over there now. And hopefully investigate. Looks like the Imperials have finished whatever it was they were doing there though. Since they've just flown away. And it's raining. Typical. Right, before doing anything else, just check with the merchants for some gear upgrades. You can actually purchase Bio now. From the merchants here, one of the merchants. And that's a tremendous spell actually for your black mage. Because it basically does nasty AoE damage to the enemies that it hits. And it also has a chance to cast sap as well. So if you're going to get anything, get that. But also sell all the loot you've been collecting up until this point as well. And then we're going to move on. Okay folks, so I've stocked up on some equipment. Bought a few new weapons for our party members. Just to boost up their attack powers and what have you. And also I've purchased that bio spell. So Penelo will look forward to using that, I'm sure. But that's going to bring us to the end of this walkthrough. When we head into the next section here, we're going to be facing... Uh, this way, rather. We're going to be facing another boss. So I thought we'd save that for another episode. Uh, but thanks for joining me today. I hope this has been helpful for you. If it has, let me know in the comments section. And maybe, if you'd be kind enough, you could just drop a like as well. But that's it for me for today, folks. So goodbye for now, and I look forward to joining you again soon.